The question is about the timing and the implication of you telling the story. Um, the New York Times has this. Right. None of this happened during President Biden's administration, but that didn't stop the first term senator from strongly implying that the president could have somehow prevented it from happening using rhetoric that seemed calibrated to inflame public fears about immigration. Did you mean to give the impression that this horrible story happened on President Biden's watch? No, Shannon. Look, I very specifically said this is what President Biden did during his first 100 days. Right. And yet this senator has gone around repeatedly for the past year and change telling the story over and over again as if this woman had confided something in her and as if she was describing actions that had taken place on or even near the U.S.-Mexico border during Joe Biden's presidency. I don't even know what to say, except that is just fundamentally dishonest. It goes beyond misleading. Welcome to What Was That? I'm Gabe Sanchez. Not only did Republican Senator Katie Britt give a bizarre and dramatic response to President Biden's State of the Union, but now she's been caught in a disgusting lie that was exposed by journalist Jonathan Katz. Busted! By now, I'm sure you've seen Katie Britt's awkward and soap opera-esque response that's filled with dramatic pauses and heavy breathing. Her video response is so bad that even Republicans aren't fans of it. She embarrassed herself, she embarrassed the Republicans, and she embarrassed women. It was a disgrace. I was horrified by her performance. And I really think that it's going to take her years to rebound from that performance. Now, there are many moments during Katie Britt's 17 minute heavy breathing rant that made me react like Tucker Carlson. But there was one moment in particular that gave me pause. It was when Britt told a story about a young woman who had been a victim of rape and sex trafficking. When I took office, I took a different approach. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas that's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. We wouldn't be okay with this happening in a third world country. This is the United States of America, and it is past time, in my opinion, that we start acting like it. President Biden's border policies are a disgrace. This crisis is despicable. And the truth is, it is almost entirely preventable. As you can see, Britt used that story as a way to suggest that the woman had suffered these crimes inside the US because of President Biden's failed policies. Now, earlier, I mentioned this story gave me pause, and that was because this is the kind of thing that you'd expect Republicans to be screaming from the rooftops and pushing all over right-wing media news, especially when given the chance to attack President Biden over the southern border. However, this is where Britt's story falls apart, and the person who caught on and exposed Britt's gross lie was journalist Jonathan Katz. So. I looked a little bit to see if I could figure out what Senator Britt was talking about here, and I found it pretty easily. Senator Britt has told the story over and over and over again since going on this trip, so all I had to do was look for details of the trip, see if there was any information about who she talked to, and if there was any more information about this case there, and I think I found it pretty easily. So in January 2023, Senator Britt, who had just become the junior senator from Alabama, traveled to southern Texas to the Del Rio district near the border of Mexico with two other Republican senators, Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee and Cindy Hyde-Smith of Mississippi. And Senator Blackburn had all of the information about it on her website, her senatorial website. During this trip, among other scheduled visits, the senators had what they described as a round table, although you can see it's not a round table, it's a long table on which they are sitting on one side of it. It's a press conference. They were there with a Fox News contributor, Sarah Carter, who often does sort of the xenophobic anti-immigration coverage, as well as a Mexican congresswoman who's become an anti-human trafficking activist, as well as this woman who the senators identify as Carla Jacinto Romero. All I had to do was click on Carla Jacinto Romero's name, that hyperlink, on Senator Blackburn's page, and it took me to this. This is Carla Jacinto Romero's testimony to Congress from 2015 about her experiences in Mexico. And if you scroll down, you see it took place between 2004 and 2008. Now, I don't know what they put in the textbooks in Alabama these days, 
But Joe Biden wasn't the president of the United States in 2004 or 2008. He wasn't even the vice president of the United States. That wouldn't happen until 2009. In 2004 and 2008, the president of the United States was George W. Bush. Vice president was Dick Cheney. And none of that really matters here because these events didn't happen in the United States. These crimes didn't take place in the United States or even near the border. They took place in Mexico, in Guadalajara, in Mexico City, and other parts of Mexico. Not only did Carla Jacinto Romero speak with Congress in 2015, but she's also done countless interviews as an activist. And just so you know, these are all on YouTube. Do your research. In 2015, CNN did a human interest piece on her about how she's trying to save other young women. And you lived this hell for four years? You see me now with a smile on my face, but when I remember all of that, it still hurts a lot. I'm going to fight against this until the end. Every day when I wake up, I wonder if I'm going to be alive at the end of the day because of what we do, and what I have experienced makes me a target. Death is lurking. And after Jonathan Katz's video went viral, the Washington Post asked Brit's communication director, Sean Ross, for clarification, and he confirmed that Brit was talking about Carla Jacinto Romero, who has testified before Congress about being forced to work in Mexican brothels from 2004 to 2008. In a phone conversation and a statement, Ross disputed that Brit's language was misleading. You sure about that? Let's just go back to Brit's response. We know that President Biden didn't just create this border crisis. He invited it with 94 executive actions in his first 100 days. When I took office, I took a different approach. I traveled to the Del Rio sector of Texas. That's where I spoke to a woman who shared her story with me. She had been sex trafficked by the cartels starting at the age of 12. And there you go, Senator Katie Britt lied, but no one should be surprised because that's what Republicans do. They are fueled by fake outrage and lies. But to be clear, the story that you relate is not something that's happened under the Biden administration, that particular person. Um, well, I very, I very clearly said I spoke to a woman who told me about when she was trafficked when she was 12. I learned nothing. This is what happens when you let extremists, fascists, and conspiracy theorists into your party. Like a parasite, they infect members one by one to the point where you now have someone on national TV telling outright lies. This is today's Republican Party. They made their bed and now they must lie in it. And speaking of bed, I want to thank today's sponsor. Miracle Made. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you ever wake up too hot or too cold, then I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with a silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. And they feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing outbreaks and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to TryMiracle.com slash Gabe to try Miracle Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo Gabe at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Gabe and use the code Gabe to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Gabe to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Now, Republicans will claim that they care about securing the southern border, but then they will happily kill a bipartisan bill because Trump said so. She was one of the U.S. senators who was involved in the bipartisan negotiations Correct. to create a border bill. Um, and she helped create the bill and then voted against it when Donald Trump 
called on Republicans to pull the plug on the bill that they themselves had negotiated. We have a little piece of sound from uh, President Biden's remarks tonight that got a very interesting response in the room from the lead Republican senator with whom Katie Britt worked to write the border bill. In November, my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? That conservatives got together and said it was a good bill? I'll be darned. That's amazing. That bipartisan bill would hire 1,500 more security agents and officers, 100 more immigration judges to help tackle the backload of 2 million cases, 4,300 more asylum officers, and new policies so they can resolve cases in six months instead of six years now. What are you against? Uh, Senator Lankford, Lankford from Mouse. Oklahoma. That's true. Yeah. He was the yes. lead Republican yeah. negotiator, along with senators like Katie Britt, who just gave that long, lurid speech about the, to the, for the most part, about the border. And you saw Senator Lankford there saying, He's that's mouthing. true. That's true. Yeah, he said, absolutely. that's true, after President Biden described what was in that bill. Again, that bill negotiated by Republicans, by conservative Republicans. They got everything they wanted. And it was Donald Trump who then called on Republicans to pull the plug on it. Trump did that so Biden doesn't get a win and that Trump has something to campaign on during the election. You know, since Trump didn't do anything in office other than playing golf, ruining our economy, and stoking xenophobia and hatred. And during Trump's administration, he made human trafficking central to his platform, pledging to mobilize the full force of the U.S. government to fight this epidemic. New FOIA data obtained through a court case against the Department of Homeland Security reveals how immigrant survivors of trafficking under the Trump administration face an unprecedented risk of harm. As immigrant survivors step forward to claim their legal rights, they face longer than normal delays, increased scrutiny, and a greater likelihood of deportation. And don't forget, Nazi Nosferatu Stephen Miller was the architect of Trump's extremist immigration problems. It was later reversed by President Biden after he got into office, which is one of the things that Katie Britt was complaining about. Katie Britt's lie reminds me of another lie about the southern border that was told by MAGA extremist Marjorie Taylor Greene. In 2020, there were 4.8 thousand pounds of fentanyl seized by CBP. But in 2021, fiscal year 2021, it increased to 11.2 thousand pounds of fentanyl was seized by the CBP. Wait, 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 hold on. If 4.8 thousand pounds were seized in 2020 and 11.2 thousand pounds were seized in 2021, that would mean that Biden's policies are working better than Trump's. Folks, it's 2024 and Republicans like Marjorie Taylor Greene are still struggling to understand what the word seized means. But in case any Republicans are watching, seized means taken hold, possession, or confiscated. In a gross miscalculation, Marjorie Taylor Greene tried and failed to blame the death of a grieving mother's two sons on President Biden. Here's the thing, that happened in 2020 under Donald Trump. And much like Katie Britt, Marjorie Taylor Greene might wanna double check the year that it actually happened in before making a wild claim about President Biden. Because again, President Biden was not in office. And when fact-checked by CNN's Daniel Dale, Greene spokesman Nick Dyer responded by saying, lots of people have died from drugs under Biden, and do you think they give a f about your bullshit fact checking? Telling someone to f off seems to be the go to response in Marjorie Taylor Greene's playbook. What about Jewish space lasers? Tell us about Jewish space lasers. No, why don't, you, why don't you go talk about Jewish space lasers? And really, why don't you f off? How about that? I'm Thanks. Thank you very much. This is how MAGA works. They will tell other people to do their own research, but then when asked about details or fact checked, they'll just say fake news. Any chance the Republican Party can get to blame President Biden? They will, even if he wasn't in office. Like how Republicans blame Biden for storming the Capitol. What? You have to remember, this is the party of liars like fraudster George Santos and broke rapist Donald Trump. They lie like their lives depend on it. Just like with Katie Britt during her State of the Union response. It just looks like she just got on national television and lied about something really horrific and really important and for her own personal and her party's political gain. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. And if you liked today's episode and want to support the show, you can subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Over there, you'll get early access to episodes, bonus content, and exclusive merch. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been, what was that? <laughs>